Welcome back. In this next video, we are going to keep working with our similarity theorems and postulates, our angle-angle, our side-side-side, and our side-angle-side similarity. Remember, with angles, they're always going to be congruent, and with sides, they're always going to be proportional. So we're going to set up two frac or we're going to set up fractions and make sure they reduce to the same ratios. Okay? All right, so let's look at the next example. Determine whether the triangles are similar. This time, if they are, we are going to write a similarity statement. And then when it says explain our reasoning, we're going to fill in our reasoning as which theorem or postulate did we use. Okay? And then if we say no, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to fill anything else in. Okay? All right. So on this first one, I can see I have an angle marked that matches an angle here. So I've got two congruent angles in that go together. And then here's another pair of congruent angles that go together. So there's two sets of congruent angles. So I can say yes by angle angle similarity. Okay? Now I need to write my similarity statement. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle. If I start here at A, which has the single arc on it, then I have to start at D. And I already have the triangle symbol written there for me, so I don't have to worry about that. And then from A, I go to B that has the double arcs, so B, oops, double arcs, E. And then last but not least, I come to the unmarked angle C, which is going to match with F. Then we're just supposed to put a scale factor. Unfortunately, since I have no numbers in this problem, I don't have enough information to do a scale factor. So on your assessment today, there's going to be a choice for you to put an X. If you don't have enough information for something, then you can just put an X, okay? Or down here for this blank where it says, no, they are not similar. Well, they are similar, right? I said yes, so I could put an X here because they are similar. So I'm not going to choose. I'm not going to select, no, they are not similar, okay? All right, let's look at number two. Again, we're going to test to see if the triangles are similar. Um, I only have one angle that I can see. I have a 90-degree angle here, and I have a 90-degree angle here, so I can't use angle angle because I only have one angle. So I'm going to test side angle side, right? Because out of this angle, I can see I have a 36 and a 20. And on the other one coming out of the angle, I have an 18 and a 24. Okay? So I'm going to label my small side and my large side for each one. So I'm going to go small and large. And then over here, 18 is small and 24 is large. And then I'm going to do arrows so I stay consistent. That's always going to be my numerator. That's always going to be my denominator. And it's good that I'm going to do that because JKL comes first. So when I do my scale factor, it'll make sense that it matches with my similarity statement. All right, so compare small to small. My up small is 20. My down small is 18. And then I'm going to compare largest to largest. My up large is 36. And my down large is 24. Okay, so now we just need to reduce our fractions. So when I reduce my fractions, let's see, 20 and 18, they're both divisible by 2. 20 is divisible by 2, I get 10. 18 is divisible by 2, I get 9. And that doesn't reduce any further. 36 and 24, both divisible by 12. 36 divided by 12 is 3. And 24 divided by 3 is, or sorry, divided by 12 is 2. So notice these are not equal. That means my sides are not proportional. So I'm going to say no, these are not similar. Okay? Which means if this was on my assessment, I'm going to put X's for each of these because I can't fill them out. I can't write a similarity statement if I don't have similar triangles. I'm not, even though we tested SAS, they're not similar by SAS, right? And then there is no scale factor if you don't have similar figures. So the rest of those I can just put X's because none of them apply to this situation. Okay? Let's look at the third example. Okay, so here we have what we call nested triangles. Okay? When we do nested triangles, a lot of times what you'll see me do is I will re-sketch each triangle so that I can see a big triangle, which is R, T, U, and then my smaller triangle, which is 
S L T. Okay. All right, so if I want to check those and see, are they similar? Now, I do notice that when I took them both out, they both had this angle T. So that's definitely one angle. Okay? And then if you've been in class with me since the beginning of the school year, you'll remember that the whole first quarter, I kept saying you can't forget stuff in geometry. You can't forget stuff in geometry. It's always recursive. You always need to go back and reuse your information. You're always going to need to reuse your information. Okay? So what I mean is you need to remember, if I see these little triangles, I need to go, what is that telling me? That's telling me these segments are parallel. And I know that when I have parallel lines, let me get a little piece of scratch paper. When I have parallel lines and a transversal, if these lines are parallel, then my alternate exterior angles are congruent, alternate interior angles are congruent, corresponding angles are congruent, and same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay? So for example, the first one that we learned was corresponding in the same position, right? So like these two angles, they're equal to each other. Okay? Well, look what happens if I turn my picture this way so that my parallel lines kind of run in the same way they run. And then I look and I, oh, I've got this triangle. When I have parallel lines, look at these angles. These are corresponding angles. Angle R and angle S have the same exact measurement because I have parallel lines. So you have to remember all, all those other things that we've talked about, right? Vertical angles are congruent. When we have parallel lines, we get lots of congruence and we even get some supplementary. R and S, we can show because of parallel lines and transversals, I know those are congruent. So are my triangles similar? Yes, because I can show two angles are similar. So by the angle, angle, similarity. RTU is similar to triangle. So if I started here at R, my double angle, I'm going to start at S. And then I went to T, my single angle, T. And then I went to U. So here I'll go to L, STL. And again, for my scale factor, I don't have any numbers, so I don't have enough information to get the scale factor. And I'm not going to put an X here, or I'm not going to put a check there because we said yes, they are similar. Okay? All right, let's go look at number four. On number four, I have all of my numbers there. Okay? So I can, or all my sides are labeled with numbers. So I'm going to test side, side, side. And to do that, I'm going to compare my smallest side to my smallest side, my largest side to my largest side, and then my medium side to my medium side. Okay? I'm going to put arrows in my triangle so I remember which one, and I stay consistent, which is going to go in the numerator each time, which is going to go in the denominator each time. So my small from the up triangle is 24. I'm going to compare that to the small, 15. And then my medium from the up triangle is 32. My medium from the down triangle is 20. And then my largest, 40 and 25. Okay, so now we're going to reduce and see if they reduce to the same thing. 3 goes into 24 8 times. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 32 and 20 are divisible by 4. 4 goes into 32 8 times. 4 goes into 20 also 5 times. So these two are equal. Nice. Over here, 40 and 25 are both divisible by 5. 5 goes into 40 8 times. And 5 goes into 25 5 times. So they do all reduce to 8 fifths. Okay, so that means they are similar by side, side, side similarity. GIH is similar to triangle. So G is between the small and the medium. So over here between small and medium is Q. And then from G I went to I. So from G I went across the small side. So from Q I'm going to go across the small side to S. And then I'm going to end up at R. My scale factor, now if I have my similarity statement, my scale factor should match my similarity statement. So my GHI 
came first, so that should be the one on top, which is what I happen to do. So I can write it as a fraction like this, or I can write it as 8 to 5. I can write it either way. Either one of these answers is correct. I could even write it out 8 and then the word 2, 5. And then here I'm just going to put an X because that one is doesn't need to be filled out. Okay? All right. So in the next example, we're going to do a couple more where we are going to see if our triangles are similar, but then we're also going to find some missing values. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next video.